Reports from Chief Town of the North West Region of the country, Bamenda, confirms that armed clashes between forces of law and order and suspected separatist fighters has left many persons injured and several others fleeing for safety. Good evening. You are on to Prime News on my media plan, Gender Perry Blanche King. Is my name We're live from uh, the country's economic capital, Douala, streaming from uh, Studio A of My Media Prime. Prime News starts now. At least uh, two persons have lost uh, their lives and three others injured in a car accident that occurred along uh, the Douala Banga Highway. Sources say the sum of 15 million francs CFA was equally burned to ashes, as well as a car island, as Summer reports. The accident which has been blamed on the bad nature of the road at Pendamboko where it happened along the Dualambanga Highway involved a Toyota pickup vehicle matriculated CE934LC and a Corolla car which caught fire after the occupants were rescued according to eyewitnesses. This pickup they go up then we're gonna come down. So John does this so he come for this pickup inside. We come now, don't run, go for bush, as you enter for bush now. So this man with this corona pick up, he will get here, he follow him, go for bush now, he will jam it for him. He will pay the sound, so he turn upside down, the fourth time he did for up. As the fourth time he did for up now, he turn. We come now, we struggle for turn back the motor before we, we draw people there. Before the motor now cash for cash off, this woman before they want to and then they come now can take over. Among the five occupants, including the car driver, was a lady who was traveling with the sum of 15 million francs CFA and later on died as they were being rushed to hospital. The five who survived are currently at the Mbanga District Hospital receiving medical care while security officers are carrying out due investigations on the incident which caused huge material and human damages. Tension and panic has continued to reign in most parts of the northwest region of Cameroon. Reports say gun battles between the military and suspected separatist fighters in Bamenda has left many residents fleeing for safety. A northwest correspondent says the gun battles is in response to the brutal murder of a law enforcement official earlier today. The minutes ahead are uncertain. This is a developing story. Stay with My Media Prime for more. The commander of the 5th Military Region, Valerinka, has urged Boyo population to collaborate with forces of law and order to ensure the return of peace and serenity in the northwest region. This comes after an operation which led to the death of about 17 suspected separatist fighters and the arrest of seven others. A student journalist on internship, Nube Naivona, completes the story in the following report. Some 17 separatist rebels have been neutralized and seven others apprehended by the state military forces in Belo Boyo Division of the Northwest Region of Cameroon. This happened as a result of an operation recently carried out by the army against the separatist group in Boyo, an operation spearheaded by the commander of the 5th Military Region, General. General Valerinka resulted in the neutralization of 17 and capture of seven separatist fighters alongside the seizure of light weapons, explosive devices, and marijuana. The commander applauded his troops for the good work done, at the same time pleading on the calm population to collaborate in ending the violence, gaining grounds in the war regions for over four years now. <laughs> Because we hear, we don't know who they encourage them. They would decide for say a whole population will not go shit on, will not get things for job. Man, they don't go for farm. Man, don't feel sell the boutique and all that thing and so. May that thing come to an end. We are not here. 
uh, shipments of improvised explosive devices were seized uh, yesterday in uh, Garua. The explosives uh, were found in a stolen car, allegedly from uh, Nigeria. Details with student journalists and internship at Tapa content in the French language. Plus de 200 engins explosifs, c'est la marchandise non autorisée par le gouvernement, saisie hier par la mission Alcomi 23 à Garoua, dans la région du Nord Cameroun. La cargaison était dissimulée dans un véhicule de marque Stalet en provenance du Nigeria. Cette interception s'explique par la lutte contre la contrebande. La contrebande d'abord et des deux, les marchandises prohibées. La contrebande, c'est la marchandise qui est entrée dans le territoire sans passer par les services de douane. Et les prohibitions, c'est les marchandises qui ne sont pas autorisées d'entrer au Cameroun. Donc si on trouve ces marchandises, on arrête. Ce matin, on vient de prendre les, les matériels qu'on peut utiliser pour fabriquer les explosifs. Ce matériel de fabrication de bombes arrive dans un contexte marqué par l'insécurité dans le Grand Nord. Ce dernier peut alimenter les exactions de Boko Haram sur les populations. En rappel, ces interceptions sont récurrentes dans cette partie du pays. Avant-hier, une cargaison de riz importé a été saisie. Euh, Avant-hier, on a saisi le riz, que vous voyez derrière moi, euh, le riz, des cargaisons de riz. Le riz est interdit d'exportation, on n'exporte pas le riz. À la suite de la dernière opération d'Alcomi 23, le gouverneur a pris des mesures interdisant la pénétration des véhicules de Martalet en terre camerounaise et limiter les voyages du Nigeria pour Garoua, vice-versa. Activities in the towns of Marua, Mukolo, Mora, Kuseri and other parts of the far north region of the country have been handicapped by a major blackout in that part of the country. This is as a result of heavy downpour on August 20, uh, 31, 2020, putting down one of the main electricity towers in uh, that area. As uh, student journalist on internship, Emanuela Ngela, tells us in the following report. Marwa. Capital of the far north region of Cameroon, the population stranded due to heavy rains that caused the collapse of the bridge along the National Road No. 1 on August 31, 2020. The population of Marwa completely cut off from Kuseri due to the collapse of Polar Bridge. The entire Marwa town is now in darkness. The regional delegate of Enio Buba Babani, in a release published on August 31, 2020, said the Sona Trail was informed about the occurrence just on Monday morning. This incident was due to the collapse of one of the pylons as a result of heavy downpour in Marwa. Consequently, this led to the disruption of electricity in the whole city from Marwa, Mokolo, Mora, Bobo Maga, Yagua, and Kuseri, amongst others. Informed of the situation, the governor of the far north region, Midia Wabaga, descended on the scene to assess the damage caused so far. Some of the bridges are very old, and uh, we do think that uh, something is necessary to do. And as far as uh, the palace is concerned, we, are, we will inform the high ranking to rehabilitate the small break to uh, enable uh, drugs to go through a uh, neighboring division or neighboring country. The population now calling on the government to come to their aid for electricity to be restored, polar bridge rehabilitated, and circulation along the Marwakuseri stretch of road can return. Student journalist on internship, Emanuela Angela, ending uh, that report. You're still on to your uh, 6 at 30. Prime news on my media prime, a five year strategic development plan for the 2021 2025 academic year has been presented by the University of Ngaoundere. The strategic plan, which aims mainly at professionalizing the institution, also focuses on orientating graduates to be more competitive in the job market upon graduation. Our reporter, Darling Gonde, with details. During the end of deliberations chaired by the Minister of State, Minister of Higher Education and Chancellor of Academic Order, Professor Jacques Famandungu, the Strategic Development Plan for the University of Ngaoundere was presented. The five-year Strategic Development Plan is designated to run from the 2021 academic school year up to that of 2025, with focus on pertinent areas including emphasis to be laid on the professionalization of training, even at the traditional faculties. While presenting the Strategic Plan to 
the public, the rector of the University of Ngaoundary, Florence of Hiechinja Mello, said the goal is to equip the students of the university in order to make them more competent and competitive in the job market with skills on how to become self-employed. The project was equally presented to the partners of the university institution so that its implementation becomes a reality by the end of the period indicated, she added. For the plan to be achieved, the rector further added, it will require the efforts of all stakeholders as well as financial partners involved, whom she has urged to totally believe in the institution. The deliberations were also an opportunity for the various faculties and schools affiliated to the University of Ngaoundary to demonstrate their savoir firm in order to convince all the partners and stakeholders present. The Minister of State, Minister of Higher Education, Professor Jacques Famandongo, who was also present during the presentation, in turn loaded the institution for the initiative to draw out a plan which he said falls in line with the higher education's goal to produce the best and most competitive talents into the job market. Cameroon Party for National Reconciliation, PCRN of Honorable Cabrali B, have paid an aid visit to artist Martha Zambo. The delegation was represented by Honorable Fortsing of Vuri East Constituency, Gladys Bomotongina, in the French language. <laughs> de la musique camerounaise touchée, Marthe Zambou, auteur du titre à succès avec toi, vivant actuellement à Niala, serait atteinte d'un diabète sévère. Suite à son récent appel à l'aide au gouvernement camerounais, le PCRN, Parti camerounais pour la réconciliation nationale, représenté par l'honorable Nouran Fotsing, député du Vouri Est dans la région du littoral au Cameroun, lui a apporté son soutien et appelle à la manifestation de plusieurs. Alors, c'était déjà assez riche en émotions. Euh, ça s'est senti directement sur son visage. Le fait qu'elle qu se rende compte qu'il y a des gens qui s'inquiètent pour elle, qu'on vient lui rendre visite, c'est quelque chose de très important. Mais surtout, relayer l'information et inviter d'autres personnes à venir faire pareil. Parce qu'il ne faut pas oublier, c'est une grande icône de notre musique camerounaise, une icône internationale. Et se retrouver dans ce genre de situation après avoir tant servi notre pays, après avoir tant fait rayonner les couleurs du Cameroun, c'est difficile. La devise du PCRN, qui est de prime abord de mettre en avant les hommes, s'est vue réitérée et respectée par cette grande dame. Pour nous, il était vraiment question de, 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 de la rencontrer, de, de la reconforter, lui apporter notre soutien. Vous savez, au PCRN, on s'est toujours dit l'humain au centre de tout. Et c'est ce qu'on a décidé donc de faire aujourd'hui. Euh, que ce soit avec le président régional ou encore avec le départemental du PCRN on était tous là pour, euh, pour lui apporter notre soutien Au regard de ceci Marthe Zambo, émue et remplie de joie exprime sa reconnaissance Des jours meilleurs sont donc à l'horizon pour l'artiste camerounaise We talk sports. 30 players have been invited for a 10-day uh, training camp by the head coach of the Intermediate Alliance ahead of the sixth edition of the African Nations Championship. In the report that follows, sportsman Fabrice Kendinga says there are no major changes as compared to previous uh, call-ups. His report. The head coach of the Intermediate Lions of Cameroon, Yves Clemang Aroga, has published a list of 30 players to begin camping in view of the now postponed African Nations Championship scheduled for Cameroon in January 2021. The list released Monday, August 31, 2020, comprised three goalkeepers, eight defenders, 13 midfielders, and six forwards. The coach has kept nine players on the waiting list, including goalkeeper Anyefru Derrick. Worthy of note is the fact that two players who featured in the previous list, Pascal Mbarga Abega and Thierry Akono Akono, have missed out because of their recent moves out of the country. Former Kotong Sports midfielder Pascal Barga recently joined Congolese heavyweight RS Vita Club, while Thierry Akono Akono moved to Azam FC in Tanzania. Yves Clement Aroga and his boys are expected to embark on a 10-day training camp from Tuesday, September 15 to Friday, September 25 at the Calf Excellence Center in Bankomo, in the outskirts of Yaoundé. 
It makes meaning to recall that the Total African Nations Championship, which was originally programmed for Cameroon in April this year, was on June 30 postponed by the Confederation of African Football following the outbreak of the coronavirus. The competition reserved only for players playing in their domestic leagues will not take place in January 2021 in the Cameroonian cities of Yaoundé, Douala, Limbe and Boya for three weeks. According to the draw which held on Wednesday, January 15, 2020, host Cameroon in a fourth appearance was paired in Group A alongside 2016 runners-up, the Eagles of Mali, also in their fourth expedition. 2014 semi-finalists and one of the tournament regulars, the Warriors of Zimbabwe, are in their fifth edition, while the Stallions of Burkina Faso, in their third participation, make up Group A. In Group B, there is Libya, the Democratic Republic of Congo, the Republic of Congo and Niger. Defending champions Morocco, Rwanda, Uganda and Togo make up Group C, while Zambia, Guinea, Namibia and Tanzania are in Group D. The Intermediate Lions of Cameroon, who have never gone past the group stage of the 16 Nations Tournament, will clash with the Warriors of Zimbabwe in the opener at the Amadou Aido Stadium in Yaoundé. That's how we saw Cameroon, Africa, and the uh, world on this uh, day, uh, September 1, 2020. Thanks for choosing my Media Prime for the uh, 630 edition of Prime News. Join us tomorrow, God willing, at 630 for another edition of Prime News on my Media Prime. Faith Tata Berenoy coordinated the news produced by Ewane Elai Nolinga. My name is Genda Perrin Blanche King. We're encouraging you to stay tuned to my major prime for other interesting programs right after this at 7 p.m. Cameroon time. Kim Lunard and his panelists will be here to talk about issues affecting the world. Enjoy today's edition of Prime Hour with Kim Lunard.